Tam nartam udyatam aveksha tadata deha. Gandhar vasitha muni charana deva vadvaha. Pritiam rirdanga panavanaka vadya gita. Pushpo pahara nuti beer, saha so pek saduhu. Tam nartam udayatam avikshata dati tadiha. Kandar vasitha muni charana deva vavaha. Pritiamir Danga Panava Naka Vadya Gita Pushpa Pahara Nuti Beer Sahaso Pek Se Duhu Chant Hare Krishna Gopa Hari Prabhu Ki Jai Ladies, Tam, him, nartum, in dancing, udyatam, engaged, aveksya, taking note of, tada, then, tadiya, his servants, gandharva siddha, the gandharvas and siddhas, muni charana, the sages and the charanas. Deva Vavaha. 
the wives of the demigods, Pritya, with great pleasure, Murdanga Panava Anaka, of various kinds of drums, Vadya, with musical accompaniment, Gita, song, Pushpa, flowers, Vahara, other presentations, Nutibi, and prayers, Sahasa, immediately, Upek Siddhu, arrived. <coughs> Translation purport by the servants of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. About time for a new stand, huh? Seeing the Lord dancing, his servants in the heavenly planets, the Gandharvas, Siddhas, Sages, Charanas, and the wives of the demigods immediately arrived there. With great pleasure they began accompanying the Lord's dancing by playing drums such as Murdangas, Panavas, and Anakas. They also made offerings of songs, flowers, and prayers. Purport, very short. When the demigods and other residents of higher planetary systems became aware that Lord Krishna was personally putting on a wonderful demonstration of the art of dancing, they immediately came to offer their services. Dancing becomes more enjoyable and beautiful to watch when it's accompanied by expert drum playing, singing, and the chanting of prayers. The artistic atmosphere was also enhanced by the showering of multitude of flowers upon Lord Sri Krishna, who was blissfully engaged in dancing upon the hoods of the Kaliya serpent. Om Ajnan Timirandasya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilita Myena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapditam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadanti Swam Padanti Kam Bande Ham Sri Guru Sri Yata Padikamalon Sri Gurun Vaishnavams Cha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatam Bitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneswari Rishabhanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Pancha Kalpa Tarubhishya Kripa Sindhu Bhai Bacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so this chapter is entitled, Krishna Chastises the Kaliya Serpent. And now, he's in, I, we might say he's in the middle of the principle of chastisement. Uh, Samoham sabhabhuteshu name dvaisistina priya. Krishna says in Gita, I'm equal to everyone. I envy no one nor am I partial to anyone. Sometimes it looks like Krishna is partial. Sometimes he looks like he has enemies and others. But actually, Krishna is equal. It says in the Bhagavad Gita that as one who approaches the Supreme Lord, according to how that approach is given, the Lord is reciprocating. Exactly. In such a way that he's just... We might even say it's almost like a mirror. When you hold something in front of the mirror, you simply see the reflection of the object which you hold. So, as one approaches Krishna, 
Krishna being equal to everyone is simply responding to the how one is approaching, either directly in devotional service or indirectly through his immaterial energy. So here, Galia is actually a great soul. He was named, his name was Veda Sira in a previous life. And he was actually a sage. But he committed offense to another sage by being very envious of this other sage. Sometimes this quality of envy appears even within spiritual circles and causes one to uh, commit offenses and also causes one to fall in devotional service. So he became very much envious of this other sage and therefore that sage also knew it and realized it and cursed him. You're so envious, you're practically hissing like a snake, so become a snake. <laughs> so he was cursed in his previous life to take birth as a snake. But because of his devotional power, somehow he got the mercy of taking a snake <laughs> occupancy in the holy land of Sri Vrindavan Dham. So, in one sense, it wasn't a curse. It's a special mercy. And Krishna is simply purifying him from that envy in the form of a snake. Srila Prabhupada says, and of course this is understood in general, that of all the creatures, there are certain creatures that are very envious by nature, such as a snake, scorpion, and a human being <laughs> that will bite without provocation or commit an offense for no apparent reason or no reason at all. No. It says you can cha tame a snake by nice mantras and herbs and the scorpions you just have to avoid. <laughs> and the men, there's no question of taming them. It's impossible. Prabhupada said, I was just reading when you bring a new man into Krishna consciousness, it's like trying to tame a wild animal. So therefore you have to be very tolerant. So those of you who are trainers, never get discouraged. Because <laughs> people are wild. Why are they wild? Because they're attached to sense gratification. Not just engaged in it, but attached to it. So it's very difficult to make to make that change because that attachment is long term. So here we see Krishna is actually purifying Kaliya in a very wonderful way. Kaliya has one is it one thousand hoods or one hundred? I forgot the number. Is it one thousand or one hundred hoods? I think he has one hundred. Yeah, it's a hundred hoods. And Krishna was doing a very art artistic dance. Actually, Krishna dove into the Kaliya lake, or the lake that was in there in Vrindavan, that Kaliya was occupying, and he was just splashing around and having a good time, ex exercising his desire to swim. And he was making waves, and Kaliya was thinking, who's in my lake? Nobody's supposed to be here. And then he saw Krishna. And what did he do? He grabbed Krishna's coils. And Krishna stayed in his coils for two hours, it's mentioned. And during those two hours, the residents of Vrindavan came to see. I see Sri Radha Landanishwara ki ja. Sri Sri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani ki jai. Sri Sri Gornitai ki jai. Giri Gopal ki jai. So, imagine. The snake grabbed him with his multi-coils and just kept Krishna there for two hours. And Krishna was just smiling. But the residents of Vrindavan, in total anxiety of seeing Krishna in that, could you imagine when you see someone you not only you love, but that's you love them so much that that's all you think about, is how to, to, to please them. And so, Mother Yasoda, and many of the cowherd boys and others, even calves and cows, were all there. And they were completely absorbed in praying and trying to somehow or other save Krishna from that. 
They actually tried to jump into Kaliya Lake to save Krishna because they didn't care about themselves. They just wanted to help Krishna. But Balaram stopped them because Balaram knew Krishna's never in trouble. So while that was going on, you know, Krishna was just staying in the snake's coils. And then after two hours, he thought, that's enough. Time to break loose. <laughs> and he broke loose in a very wonderful way. Here he started to dance. And he was dancing very artistically on the hoods. The gopis were also there. And Krishna wanted to show off to the girls. Because boys like to show off to girls, right? That's, that's human life, right? You try to attract the girls by what you do. You sing nicely and the girls say, oh, he's so nice. <laughs> or you dance artistically and they say, wow. And then when you, they make noise when you're dancing, then you think, well, really, this is even better. It's just human life. That's the way it is. You know, boys are attracted to girls, and girls are attracted to boys. And Krishna's somewhere around. <laughs> that's, what can you do? That's, that's the way the world goes. Anyway, so Krishna... That same propensity, as Prabhupada says, that propensity to be attracted to the opposite sex, where does it come from? It comes from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because it's there in the Supreme Lord. He is also, in that sense, attracted, but not in the way we are attracted, to fulfill our lusty desires. He is attracted to enjoy transcendental happiness and pleasure. Because pleasure means two. There's no such thing as pleasure with one. Prabhupada said the impersonalists, they can't remain in the Brahma Jyoti. Although they're liberated and free from all material suffering, because they're by themselves, there's no happiness. Happiness means two, or loving exchange. So they never reach that platform of exchanging loving relationships with the Supreme. So padanti yada. They fall down again into the material world to again take up human relationships. So relationship is the basis of life. And when we don't find it in Krishna, we find it in, or when we usually find it in some living being in this world. But actually the source of that relationship is in Krishna. The love that we're looking for is found perfectly and exclusively in the Supreme Personality of Godhead, <clears throat> because that's our nature, to love God. And then when we love Krishna, everything is connected to Krishna, then that love manifests itself in so many men other ways, <clears throat> through serving other living entities and through associating with other living entities, which are also part and parcels of Krishna. So Krishna is having a good time. He's dancing. And he's dancing very artistically. It said, it mentions he's trying out some new dance steps too. Because, you know, good time to demonstrate a little. Because <coughs> the girls are watching. So he wants to make it a little bit more exciting. <laughs> like that. The gopis, of course, the gopis are in half anxiety and half, what we say, astonishment. Or anxiety because Krishna is with Kaliya, but at the same time they're enjoying his dance. Because Krishna is putting. And it's explained here that when the denizens of heaven, the Gandharvas, were the best of all singers, the Siddhas, very powerful living beings who can fly from one planet to another and also are great singers, the Charners also very musically inclined. And the wi many of the wives of the demigods and great sages, they all wanted to see the dance of Krishna. They came. And they brought drums with them to accompany Krishna's dance, to make it more and more, what we say, a musical expression of devotion. They offered beautiful prayers. They offered nice flowers. And they were also singing along with Krishna. So Krishna turned it into a, a Maha Kirtan. Amazing. Huh? A demon comes, is causing problems, and is polluting the lake, and Krishna turns it into a Kirtan. This is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He can take a situation that is apparently, what we say, 
inauspicious or negative and turn it into something very wonderful. Therefore, it's understood that when we're connected with Krishna, everything's wonderful. And when we're not, it's, it is, we're, we're, we're missing that wonderfulness somewhere. We're looking for it somewhere else. And Krishna is expert in all arts, arts and one of them is dancing. And Srila Prabhupada has given us Lord Chaitanya's movement in a very direct way. And Prabhupada said the whole Krishna consciousness movement is simply based on three activities. Chanting, Hare Krishna, dancing, and taking Krishna prasadam. That's all. One time the devotees were asking Prabhupada, you know, Prabhupada, well, can you explain Krishna consciousness to us? And they, you know, it's somewhat of a question. And Prabhupada said, it's just chanting, dancing, and feasting, that's all. And then the devotee said, well, yes, we have so many other things, services to do. Prabhupada said, it's all chanting, dancing, and feasting, that's all. But Prabhupada, what about, Prabhupada said, it's just chanting, dancing, and feasting. When you see everything in connection to glorifying the Lord, then everything becomes chanting, dancing, and feasting. Whether you're washing the floor, or whether you're doing the accounts, or whether you're, you know, go out on Sankirtan, it's an expression of glorification of the Lord. And glorification of the Lord comes in the form of chanting, dancing, and feasting. That's all. It's a nice movement. <laughs> it's really nice. And it's free. That's the thing. It's completely free. People have to go to nightclubs and also pay good money that they hardly, they, hard, they earn through hard work. And then they have to, in order to dance, they have to get drunk. Because nobody, everyone feels like inhibited until they get a little bit mindless. When they get mindless, then they just let loose. And then they dance all kinds of crazy ways. Like me. Anyway, that's another thing. And then they eat all kinds of abominable foods, and they call that, you know, a night out on the town. But devotees do that every day. Right? We come, we sing, and when we feel a little happy, the feet start moving, and we dance. And then you get a little tired, then you know, prasadam somewhere in the near distant future. <laughs> and Prabhupada explained that Lord Chaitanya's movement is that the, the devotees of Lord Chaitanya would get together, have wonderful kirtan, and then they would get a little tired, they would take prasadam, and then they would again continue the kirtan. So there was no break. Prashadam was always there just to encourage devotees to continue with the kirtan. Like that. So that's Lord Chaitanya's movement. Chanting, dancing, and feasting. Resolution, revolution, no solution. Right? We make so many resolutions and revolutions and this, this idea and that idea. The best idea is to have kirtan. <laughs> solves all material and spiritual problems. <clears throat> I told this story not long ago. I think I'll tell it again. It's kind of a little vague, but it has a certain point that you may understand. There were two very senior devotees in the Hare Krishna movement that didn't like each other. For some reason, I think they had some conflict in their management. And they wouldn't talk to each other. And this was going on for a long time. So one very senior devotee got involved in trying to see if he could bring them together with no luck. So finally, somehow they were both at this one kirtan. And the kirtan was going. And one was standing on one side and the other was standing, making sure they're not near each other during the kirtan. They were both in the kirtan. Now this senior devotee was thinking, here's the greatest way to bring them together. So the kirtan started to increase, and they both of them were dancing in their own little areas. So seeing that opportunity, he just somehow or other dragged them both into the middle and pushed them together, and all of a sudden they were dancing together. <laughs> you know, because the kirtan was so powerful that they, they even forgot about their enmity. 
you know that's that's the power of transcendental sound vibration and then they were dancing the, and not only were they dancing together they started to smile <laughs> they completely apparently at least for that time forgot that there was any enmity or any difficulties between them that's kirtan just destroys anything that is negative or material power of kirtan there's one kirtan group in India. I don't know their names, but they dance in a very interesting way. They dance and they look down at the ground in a very defiant way. You know what the word defiant means? Like, and what they're, they're defiant is that they're looking down at the ground and Maya, and Maya's the ground. And they're saying, okay, Maya, try and get me. Come on, I dare you. Because kirtan so powerful, Maya can't get in. <laughs> it's like they danced like this. Like that. It's just like it's a challenge. So the material energy, when kirtan is, is done according to the proper mood, what is that mood? That we're glorifying the Lord and trying to inspire the mood of kirtan through enthusiastic participation. And then the kirtan just takes off. And then it becomes transcendental. And then when it becomes really transcendental, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears, Prabhupada said, wherever there is a fenceless kirtan without any other mood, Krishna, Lord Chaitanya personally comes to dance in that kirtan. And sometimes you can even, even see him, those who have pure transcendental vision. When Srila Naratam Das Thakur was at the, uh, what, was, what was that Gram, Kater Gram festival, after 50 years after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya, the devotees from Brindavan, devotees from Jagannath Puri, and the devotees from Navadweep came together to have a Gaur Purnima celebration. And there was like thousands of devotees. Janava Devi was there, and, and Naratam Das Thakur was considered to be the leading sadhu there. And he was asked to lead the kirtan. He had a small pair of kartals, and he started to sing so sweetly. And he was just singing really sweetly, and there was 14 other cartel players and seven murdangas. This was a kirtan. And when it started to increase in tempo by his chanting, gradually the cartels started to come in, and then the Murdangas, and then gradually the kirtan just started to build. And Naratan was so absorbed in chanting so beautifully and so devotionally that the kirtan just started to gradually become more and more powerful. And at one time it was ecstatic, and everybody was absorbed in that kirtan, and it was ecstasy. Devotees were rolling on the ground and crying. And then a most amazing thing happened during the kirtan. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally appeared along with Lord Nityananda, Advaita Acharya, Kadadhar Pandit, Srivas, Pundarik Vidyanidhi, Srila Haridas Thakur, Mukunda, and many of the associates of Lord Chaitanya that had already left the planet. They all appeared there. And it wasn't like a vision. They, everyone saw them in person. And then the Lord started to dance in the kirtan. And you can imagine what happened at that point. We can only imagine. We can't, can't describe it. It became even more powerful, the kirtan. And the ecstasy was so strong that, you know, it was like people were just losing consciousness. It was just so devastating. And this went on for some time. And Lord Chaitanya was dancing and dancing and dancing. Because Lord Chaitanya likes to dance. Sometimes we get in kirtan and we think, what is this dancing? This is for sissies, you know. <laughs> but actually, I remember Bhakti Tirtha Swami Maharaj. He said, when I first came into the Hare Krishna movement, you know, he came from a background of scholarly. That was his mood. And so when he saw the devotees dancing, he was thinking, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> 
I like this movement, but not this part. <laughs> this is just a little bit too much. He describes it. And he said, but actually, after his association, you know, uh, he said, they're eating sugar, too. That's even worse. <laughs> eating sugar and dancing. That's why. That's why they dance, because they eat sugar. <laughs> Makes you, you know, loose. So he began, but after some time, you know, and, 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 and experiencing the association of devotees, you know, and later on he became, not only dancing, became one of the best dancers. And he was leading others in dancing. And if you didn't dance when he was there, you couldn't stay in the kirtan. You'd have to go somewhere else because he'd pull everyone into the dance. So this is Krishna consciousness. It awakens within the heart the expression of happiness. And I read one book before I came a devotee. And it was written by an anonymous person. It was all about spiritual life. Some French author. And he ends the whole book after describing what is spiritual life. And he says, the highest expression of happiness is to dance. <laughs> and I thought, that's nice. The highest expression of happiness. And of course, it is explained then in the Gaur Kirtan, Kibajayo Jaya Gauda Chanda. When you get into the description of the personalities who are taking part in that kirtan, it says that everyone was dancing in that kirtan, but some were not dancing, like with their feet in their arms. They were dancing in their heart. Their hearts were dancing, their minds were happy, but they weren't visually moving around for whatever reason. But everyone was dancing in one form or the other. So even if you can't dance, you know, and you're a little shy, you can dance in your mind. <laughs> you dance in your heart like that. So dancing is there, and Krishna is the best of all dancers. He's called Natabar. There's one beautiful deity that probably you might, you might not have seen in this area of the world, but there's two or three forms of this deity in, in America. And Prabhupada had this deity carved in this particular, and Krishna's right foot is on the ground and his left foot is up and it's tucked in to his right thigh and the knee is bent he has an arm like this and one arm is like this or one arm is like this and the other arm is and he's in a dancing pose and Prabhupada liked that deity he had one devotee pose for that and he had a deity carved out of that deity. And so if you go to Columbus, Ohio, in America, that's the deity there, Radhanathabar. And there's one, another deity of that same deity in New Vrindavan, and there's one in somewhere in Nebraska, I think. Some devotee has one at their house. Three, there's about three or four of these deities that I've seen. So it's Krishna in a dancing fool. Form. And Radharani's next to him, and she's also dancing like that. Beautiful deities. So Krishna, he likes to dance. And here, he's dancing on the hoods of Kaliya's soup. And every time he hits his foot down on Kaliya's head, what happens to Kaliya? Gets rid of some of his envy. It's like he's kicking Kaliya while he's dancing. And Kaliya's trying to gra grab him, too. Kaliya's using all his his coils to try to catch Krishna, but Krishna is so artistic that he's dodging all the coils and still dancing artistically. That's Krishna. <laughs> That's not easy to try to dodge somebody and at the same time perform an artistic kirtan. <laughs> so Krishna is the best in all categories. I think if someone asked me a if, if I had a benediction and I had any benediction, I would ask for just to see Lord Chaitanya dance. I think just to watch Lord Chaitanya dance would be the highest benediction. You can imagine. You can't imagine. And it says that Lord Chaitanya, is that one prayer? I'm not sure. What is it? Nava Gauravaram Nava Pushpasaram Nava Hemapam. You know that one, Marge? In that first verse, it says something about Lord Chaitanya likes to do, he's always doing novel dancing. He's always developing new steps. 
for dancing like that. So these dancers are not always the same. The Lord it likes to inculcate some more moves and make it more what we say transcendentally artistic and devotionally expressive. So that's Krishna, that's Lord Chaitanya. So that's our movement, to chant, dance, and to take Krishna prasadam. That's all. And there's some philosophy there. <laughs> and what is the philosophy? To encourage you to chant, dance, and take prasad. <laughs> that's the culmination of all philosophy. Really. And Prabhupada said that. He said, all my purports are meant to help you come to the conclusion that there's nothing but chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. That's all. And when you chant, and then you become happy through that, you actually express yourself in dancing. And this is what goes on in the spiritual world. It says that every song, every word is a song, Every step is a dance, and the constant sound is Krishna's flute. I remember when I first joined the Hare Krishna movement, I was at the Brahmachari farm in New Vrindavan, and we had another farm that was two miles away. And to get to the Brahmachari farm, you had to go through the woods, over streams and up hills. And when we got halfway, there was a tree and on that tree there was a huge sign, and the giant sign said, Sri Brindavan, where every word is a song, every step is a dance, and the constant sound is Krishna's flute. That was one of the first, I guess you could say, slokas I ever saw. <laughs> and we would pass that when we would go back and forth, going from one, one farm to another. So that is, that is our Krishna consciousness movement is to come to that platform. And as Bhakti Vinod Thakur explains, that the process of devotional service means to purify the heart, to get rid of the anarthas. And he describes in detail what the anarthas are, <clears throat> and uh, how, at what stage of pro process that one of these anarthas are removed. <clears throat> but he explains in one statement that it's very difficult to get rid of an arthas, because an arthas are long-term and many of them are deep, Expe especially the tendency to commit offenses. That's the most difficult of all the anarthas to, to destroy. But he says the fast track, or the fastest way to destroy an arthas is Sri Harinam Sankirtan. So by performing k k kirtan, our arthas go. As Prabhupada said, when you're in kirtan, you clap your hands, all the lines on your hands change, and your destiny changes. It's mentioned in Nectar of Devotion. Simply by clapping your hands in, in front of the deities in kirtan, your karma is, is going, it's changing. You're actually developing what we say spiritual karma, you might say. Or you're, you're, the results of your activities are now becoming spiritualized. So that is the process. But I'd like to speak a little bit for maybe two minutes about dancing, as devotees dance. Um, there's a system. Prabhupada taught us how to dance. Of course, sometimes we get a little ecstatic and we dance and we don't know which way we're going to go next. The, good, the ladies, they dance so gracefully. The men are like potatoes rolling this way and that way. <laughs> But they're getting better anyway. If you go to some places in the movement, the men are getting more trained into dancing. And because men are like, you know, they're, they're a little different than ladies. Ladies are graceful, and the men are just like, okay, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little different. But Prabhupada taught us how to dance with arms raised and moving feet from side to side, and then we get a little ecstatic sometimes. <laughs> But one of the ways we should avoid dancing is not to cause anyone else discomfort through your dancing. Sometimes we swing around in a very fast speed and we don't know where we're going to land. <laughs> Sometimes we land on somebody. <laughs> so we have to be very careful to dance nicely, 
Remember, we're dancing for the pleasure of the Lord, and we're also dancing to inspire others to take part in the dance. That's the only two reasons that I can see that is the motivation for dancing. And the key, the key for successful dancing, from what I my experience is, don't take your ears off the sound of the holy name. As soon as you start dancing, sometimes you get so enthusiastic, you lose connection with the sound, and all of a sudden you're just bouncing around. But keep your mind or keep your heart connected to the sound and let the holy name take you. It's the holy name that dances. And you just become an instrument of that dance through the sound of the holy name. It's no longer you. Like that. So that's the key. You know, when you find yourself dancing and you're losing or your mind is going away from the sound, then just bring it back. And then that's real dancing. Like that. Because you're actually dancing with Krishna in the sound of the holy name. Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, that's all they do. They have three poses. Their the arms are like this, right? That's here in this, this temple. That's dancing. This, that's also dancing, and then the other one is like this, that's showing mercy. When they're like that, they're, they're actually inviting us to take part in the dance. So Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda have come to bring Harinam Sankirtan to the world. And what is that? Lord Chaitanya is garling the world with the love of Srimati Radharani in the form of Sri, Sri Krishna Sankirtan. It mentions that the gopis dancing with Krishna and the rasa dance, and Lord Chaitanya dancing with his with his eternal associates in kirtan, is non different. There's no difference between those, because Lord Chaitanya is Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nohiyanya. He's Radha and Krishna in one, and he's bringing Goloka Premadana Hari Nam Sankirtan to this world. So the, the idea is to spread the Sankirtan movement by taking this chanting and dancing to everywhere. Uh, through book distribution, we inspire people to take part in Krishna consciousness, and through chanting and dancing, we give them a taste, a taste for that, the higher taste. Everyone's looking for happiness. They're trying to find it in so many ways, but nobody's finding it. Nobody's finding it. What is that? Punas punas charana charanaranam. Chewing the chewed. That's material life. When you, I was a kid, you know, we'd go to school. And sometime you'd be sitting at your desk and you reach underneath and there's all kinds of chewing gum stuck on the bottom. Did you ever have that experience? And then if you actually look, it's different colors. <laughs> Yellow and purple and so many. And you think, wow. Let me just try some. Of course, you wouldn't try it. But you might say, it looks good. But if you were to start to chew it again, there would be no juice left because it's already dry, right? It's stuck on the desk for 200,000 years. <laughs> and then you just start. So that's material life. Everyone's trying it. So they try it one way, try it this way. They eat, they eat in Morocco, they eat in London, they eat in the United States, and they eat this way, <clears throat> they eat that way, try something else. Sex life over here, try it over there, it's the same thing, chewing the chew, different colors, <clears throat> no juice. <clears throat> and everyone's frustrated. Why? Because they're not getting the satisfaction that they're looking for from these activities. So this goes on as life. <clears throat> so we say, chant Hare Krishna, and be happy. This is where this is the higher taste. This is the nectar. So it's good because every day, at least three times a day, we have how do you, we have kirtan inside the temple, right? Or four. We have Mangal Arti, we have Guru Puja, and we have Gorarti. Prabhupada's given us a real package of kirtan. So we can always come and chant and dance and ex experience that happiness that is there within the heart through this process of Harinam Sankirtan. And here, the devotees of Lord of Prabhupada says, and when it's accompanied by expert drum playing, 
and singing and chanting, and then it's like alankara. Alankara means a kind of an embellishment of the sweetness. The glories of the holy name are sweet, but when it's done in a very artistic and very devotional mood, it, it, it's just like a person might be dressed nicely, and you might think, oh, that's very nice, but if they have like a beautiful flower along with on their, on their dress, it makes the, enhances the beauty even more. Or they may have some nice jewel, or ladies like to wear flowers in their hair, sometimes. Ladies look nice with flowers, right? In Vedic culture, where women wear flowers in their hair. And they look very more attractive by wearing flowers and looking very nice. So it adds to the, the sweetness or the overall mood of, of devotion when everything is done in a very expert way with devotion like that. So Krishna, he's, he's purifying the demon, but he's also practicing how to dance. <laughs> he's dancing very nicely on the hoods of Kaliya Serpent. Any questions? Comments? Yes. Mm. Don't let it go away, yeah. <laughs> Just be aware of it ahead of time so you don't let it go away. <clears throat> you have to kind of like sometimes force concentration. Once you catch the sound, then the concentration is no longer forced. But if when it goes away, then you have to forcibly bring it back. <clears throat> but don't let it go away. From the very beginning, when the mantras are being sung, in a very soft and sweet way, connect there and, the, and keep it there. Because this is meditation. We're meditating on Krishna through the sound of his name. So kirtan is a very powerful form of meditation because it brings everyone together <coughs> in a very, what we say, complete way. So when everyone is together, just like in kirtan, if somebody's not in kirtan or just standing there, that energy, and they're not participating, is pulling away from the devotees who are having the kirtan. When the, everyone is together, it's powerful. And when there's others who are just like their minds are somewhere, that's also pulling that energy a little less. Of course, the energy that in kirtan is much powerful. Hopefully, it'll pull them in. But that's why Lord Chaitanya wouldn't let certain personalities into his nocturnal kirtans in the house of Sri Vastakur because their consciousness wasn't pure. Therefore, they couldn't even, they couldn't understand his dance or his devotional moods. And if they did, if their minds were not like that, as Lord Chaitanya had mentioned many times when Sri Vastakur's mother was being hidden in the house, she was hiding behind, she wanted to see Lord Chaitanya's dance. He, the Lord immediately could recognize there was someone impure in the house, or not perfectly pure. So he immediately stopped his dance. He said, I'm not feeling the ecstasy. There's somebody here who doesn't belong here. So when everyone is chanting together, it really, really is like powerful. Because devotion is sitting in the heart, and when it's expressed in a very enthusiastic way, it comes out very nicely. So just keep the keep the connection <laughs> as best you can. That's all I can say. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we encourage everyone to take part. 
we can also mention that dancing simply means raising your arms and moving your feet side to side. You don't have to bounce around or gin, you know. If you do that, that's dancing. It's explained when the singer is singing, you're like this. You're bringing the sound into the heart, and when you sing, you're letting it out by offering your, you're connecting your heart to offering your devotion to Krishna like that. That's kirtan. So bring it in, and then like this. So, you can't force anyone, nor, nor do we exclude anyone from being there, because we want everyone to get the mercy in one form or the other. So we have to be a little encouraging sometimes, without offending anybody. It's not ideal. We like everyone to be enthusiastic and to participate, but some people think dancing is not for me. <laughs> All right, so take prasadam. And chant Hare Krishna. So maybe they don't want to dance. But sometimes when people stay around long enough, then they become, as they say, if you if you associate with someone with a disease, you get the disease after a while. So what is that disease? Love of God. Look at Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. He was a dry logician. And he, all he could do was recite verses from, from, from the Vedas, uh, glorifying the principle of, you know, Brahman realization. In association with Lord Chaitanya, he became purified. And then one day, right after that, Lord Chaitanya went to Jagannath Temple really early in the morning, and he got some Mahaprasadam. And he went directly to the house of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, who was just waking up. The Lord said, I'm here, I've come to see you, and I've brought you some maha. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, simply, he just offered a prayer and started to eat the maha. And the Lord said, what are you doing? You know, you, you haven't even purified yourself from sleep yet. You, you're not even doing all the basic cleanly rituals. And then he started to glorify Mahaprasadam in different ways, that it, that one should, even if it comes from a distant place, even if it's contaminated, even if it's seen by lower animals, he was saying one should immediately accept the Mahaprasadam of the Lord. Lord Chaitanya was just overwhelmed with happiness, and then he started to glorify uh, Sarvabha. Just see the power of bhakti. This dry logician, now he's, he's glorifying the Lord's prasadam. And he was, he was becoming like completely opposite of what he used to be. So this is the power of bhakti. So sometimes people need a little time like that. Yes. That's called Mayavad. <laughs> yeah, the Mayavadis were criticizing, criticizing Lord Chaitanya because he was dancing as a sentimentalist. And then finally when he converted them, they started to dance and chant. So their apparently standoffishness or apparently non-participation in these activities is simply an anartha. Because Krishna, what does Krishna do in the spiritual world? He plays the flute and dances. Supreme Personality of Godhead, his highest pastime, out of all the Lord's pastimes, he's dancing and singing. So the they, 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 have a par, they have a partial understanding of what is spiritual practice, but not a complete understanding. Simply to reach Shastras and to philosophize is a direction 
towards the Lord. Offer prayers as a means for offering your devotion. But ultimately, you want to engage your heart. And when the heart becomes happy, you express your, that happiness in different ways, by singing and by dancing. And by the material world, people do these things, but they're doing it in such a way. You see, their, their idea of these other religions is they think that people are doing singing and dancing and eating, and this is all material, because that's what people do in this world. So the, the antithesis, or the spiritual aspect, is to, to rule these out and just be dry. But there's no, it's, it's just dry. There's no, there's, no, there's no juice, there's no joy in that. But you find there are many religious traditions that do sing. I mean, the Southern Baptists in, Amer in America, boy, do they sing. They can outdo us in kirtan. They really sing. <laughs> and they gets into some soul. And they also dance, too. And the Holy Rollers, that's a group of Christians, they roll on the ground sometimes. <laughs> Gopal Hari's from America, right? You know about the the Baptists, right? <laughs> right? They, 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 I, you go to some of their religious festivals. Boy, they're they're letting it out. <laughs> they sing with what they with what with, with all their heart and all their energy. And they got a lot of energy. <laughs> so you know, and there's other groups who have a partial understanding of spiritual practice, so they offer prayers and study scripture and become very solemn. And that's nice, but it's, it's not complete. Because the, the idea is to awaken that joyful nature. The soul is by nature joyful. And the joyfulness in this world simply causes us to become more and more implicated in sinful activities. So therefore, they, people see materialistic people doing that, so they create or they practice a religion which seems to be the opposite. Just like the Mayavadis say, well, material means form and spiritual means no form. But that's, that's not correct. There's spiritual form also, just like there's material form. But spiritual form is blissful and full of knowledge, where material form is temporary, and full of ignorance. But they're both forms. So their understanding is be the opposite of what the material is, and that is spiritual. But that's incomplete. That's incomplete. This movement is about becoming happy, not about becoming just morose, you know. A lot, of, a lot of religions, the people are not happy. They're just, they're offering nice prayers. They may study some philosophy. They may give in charity. But joyfulness comes when you, you express your devotion. And music is the highest form of religious expression. Narada Muni, the greatest of all sages, travels around with a vena. And he's singing and playing the veena, and he's glorifying the Lord with music. Goddess Saraswati, the goddess of learning, who is glorified even in other traditions as being that person to worship for knowledge, she carries a veena and sings also. Krishna plays the flute. <laughs> so this is, this is an indication of what is real spirituality. Does that make sense? Yeah, they also do. I mean, what they're doing is all right. It's nice, but it's it's not complete. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with what they're doing, but if you want to add the element of, of joyfulness, then devotional expression through music and through dance brings, that, brings the heart into that arena.
in a very wonderful way. But it has to be done in the right mood. Therefore, everything we do, our singing and our dancing, is also guided by Shastra. It's not just whatever you want to do. It's guided by philosophy and by the instructions of the spiritual teachers. Upahari. Certain types. Prabhupada says that statement because he says milk touched by the lips of a serpent becomes poisonous. Although milk is very nice. When the serpent drinks the milk, he leaves his poison in the milk. So non devotees perform kirtan not to glorify the Lord. Or or maybe some of that's there, but it's more of a musical expression or a pecuniary a computer-ready display, trying to make some money, try to gather followings, trying to make become popular. Any of these motivations that enter into the, the kirtan makes the kirtan less than than acceptable. Mm -hmm. Kirtan means to glorify the Lord, that's all. If you're doing it for money, you're doing it as an, a musical entertainment, it pollutes the pure element like that. So Prabhupada said avoid that. And certain kinds of kirtans, I think anything that doesn't glorify the Lord is not real bona fide kirtan. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes? To be. Well, that's. A lover of God takes care of everything. Not only the environment, but other people, everything. He sees everything in relationship to God. The environment, for sure. Other people, for sure. Himself, also. And even the, the inanimate, dead material objects he sees as possessions of the Lord. Yeah. But if you kill that demon, another one will appear. It's like, they're like, you know the story of Ravana? He had ten heads, and the Lord was using an arrow to cut off one head and then that head was going and then another head was coming up. So if you stop one form of pollution, something else. So then the Lord was told that in order to kill him you have to shoot it into the heart. And then he was finished. So we have to change people's hearts. To change their activities Without changing the heart means the activities will still continue. So the pollution that comes by way of environmental or any other form of pollution is the pollution of the heart. When the heart is polluted, you do things that are detrimental to the environment and to others. So a devotee, or one who is actually following devotee, doesn't pollute anything, either the environment or their own consciousness, or anything, even, you know. They don't think. They think everything belongs to Krishna, so therefore I should treat it in the best possible way. The nuclear physicist and so many other people who are in power, they don't have that conception. 
and therefore their motivation is money. So if you knock out one group, another group will be there. It's endless. You can't stop it that way. You have to change their consciousness. So this is about changing people's consciousness. Once the consciousness has changed, the activities change. <laughs> like that. Okay, yes. Good qualities for a snake? Yeah. You see, not to say. He, he's around the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He holds up all the hoods on there. There he is, right there. Yeah. Okay? So we can glorify the snakes. <laughs> yes. what's lowest in the material is highest in the spiritual. <laughs> they, when they look at Lord Nutringadev, they get a little nervous too. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, so we have to preach. <laughs> See, if everything was clear, there'd be no preaching. There would be nothing to do. So we need some, <laughs> we have to preach so we can educate people. And spiritual is not, you know, people see things through their conditioned consciousness. And conditioned consciousness means it's always wrong. And so, therefore, to have people understand things, through spiritual understanding or spiritual philosophy. So that's why we get a chance to preach like that. So when people ask, well, who's that you know, person tearing up this other person? This is a religion? Well, that's God in the form of protection. and He's destroying a very powerful demon. So God comes in that form just to give protection. And then people will... You know, intelligent people will be able to understand. You might have to ask him. <laughs> Maharaj, can you handle that question? Why Balaram takes that, that particular form? Or why he, when he left the world, he merged into a snake, right? He, his, his, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're transcendental. They're not ordinary snakes. Hare Krishna. Okay, it's time for Prashad. See, I told you it'd get better. <laughs> See, it always gets better. Srila Prabhupada ki, Srimad Bhagavatam ki. I'd just like to thank His Holiness Chandra Muni Maharaj for taking time.